you saw the thumbnail, you read the title, and now you're wondering, okay, is this legit? Can you actually get a credit card that gives you 25,000, 50,000, 75,000, 100,000 in usage for your credit limit? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. I mean, just check this guy out right here who used his American Express Centurion, or Centurion, however you wanna say that word, he used it to buy some art. Obviously, he's a, he's a collector and he obviously is going to use that for his investment and to diversify his portfolio. And look, if you wanted maybe a more simpler, normal, nine to five type of example, just check this guy out right here who used his credit card to buy himself a Honda Odyssey. Now look, regardless if you're using your credit card to either maximize the amount of investments that you use or if you're literally using it to maybe purchase yourself an exotic animal, whatever it is, the answer to that is you can absolutely use your credit card and raise your credit card limit with the examples that I'm going to give you here in this video. All that I ask in return is that you hit the subscribe button down below and join the official community and make sure to share this video with someone that you think might find this information useful. Check this out. I first wanted to give you myself as an example. I was needing an, some extra cash, so to speak, and I was running a little bit low on cash at the time when I was getting married. And so what I did was I ended up calling my credit card companies and I ended up asking them, hey, look, I know that my limit on this credit card is this much. Can you guys raise my credit limit? Because I am looking to pay this wedding off not just in cash because I had some cash that, were, that was about to come in for some transactions that I was closing out. I was selling real estate at the time, but I wanted to put that on the credit card because I wanted to get some of the rewards and I also wanted to get some of what I would call cash back benefits and just I wanted to what I would say utilize those benefits to its highest potential. Um, so here's what I ended up doing. I ended up getting what I would call a or what I really what I had was a cha uh, Chase Sapphire credit card at the time. I think the limit on that was just over $6,000. I put the entire honeymoon on that card in exchange or in return when I paid that balance off in full, I ended up getting, I think it was a trip to New York completely paid for, um, which I thought was fantastic. So if you're wondering, okay, what exactly do I have to do or what exactly do these credit card companies look for if I wanted a credit limit of at least 25, 50,000 or even 100,000. Again, I'm gonna share with you what's worked for me in the past to get some of these higher credit limits. Now, one thing that I do caution, and obviously if you're watching this video, then I would hope that you're watching the video with a, what I would call an observatory lens that you're not just going to grab these credit cards so that you can just go ahead and go out on a splurge, on a weekend, go to all the designer stores, but really that you're gonna be putting these to use which some ex with some examples that I'm gonna be giving you later on in this video. So the first thing that credit card companies look for is they are going to look at, drum roll please, yeah, that's right, they're gonna look at your credit score. Don't expect your credit limit to get raised to one of these higher credit card limits if let's say you have a 620 credit score or if you're still in the rebuild phase, if you still, let's say, have a 670, I wouldn't even attempt, and again, this is just my opinion, I wouldn't even attempt to ask any of these credit card companies or even try to go for a higher credit usage if you have anything less than a 740. They're gonna look at anything that's 740 all the way through an 850 credit score because that's obviously going to show them that you've been able to repay on time and that you are fiscally responsible. So that's the first thing that I would check first before moving on to these next steps. The next, the next thing that I want to maybe inform you about before giving this a shot is that you want to have your credit utilization down to at least 30% or less. I would venture out to say you wanna make sure that you have 20% or less with your credit utilization, and here's why. The last thing that a bank and the last thing that a lender is going to do, same thing with a DTI for a home, when you, whenever you go to qualify for a house, the last thing that they're gonna do is they're gonna lend out money to some guy or some gal that, let's say, has $50,000 in credit card debt, and what their credit utilization is $60,000, and it looks like they're only making the minimum payment back. They're gonna say, not so fast. We're gonna go ahead and put a stop to this. As a matter of fact, we may even lower your credit limit just because you're maybe hovering around that 80 
90% threshold. Now, if you're anything like me, I like to use my credit cards. I can max them out every month, but best believe that at the end of the month, I'm paying them off in full. One, you're gonna get the benefits from the credit cards. And again, you're not gonna get rich off the rewards. You're not gonna get rich off of some of these, let's say, cash rewards or maybe these travel rewards. You know, I get it. They're pretty good. Like in my case, I ended up paying for some of my trips and things like that. But really, it's going to come down to how you utilize the credit card. And, and that's exactly what I would hope you do after watching this video, using it the right way. And something else that you should be aware of is most credit card companies. Now, you may want to find out if yours already does this. I know bigger companies like Chase and Wells Fargo do things like this, where they take a look at the last six to 12 months of, let's say, your credit standing. They see that you're making, you've been making your payments on time, your credit utilization is low, and then they'll just go ahead and bump up your credit limit altogether. Now, again, take that with a grain of salt because not every credit card company does that, and this is a case-by-case -case situation. So if that's not necessarily the case with you, then that's when you want to go ahead and proceed to the final step that I have. Now, before getting to that final step, one very important step that I don't want you to skip is go over your financials. What is your income like? If your income is, let's say, you have a pretty good credit score, 740, but your income is, eh, you're not, you know, you're not making deep six figures or you're not really making anything above 80, 90 grand, then you may not get access to that 25, 50,000, $100,000 credit limit and above. Look, I've seen situations where someone has maybe a 745, maybe a, maybe a 750 credit score. It's good credit score. I mean, it's nowhere near 800, but since they have, again, an income that shows that they have a business, they have their LLC in place, and you don't need an LLC for this, but I'm just giving you this as an example. They have their financials in place, meaning they make over 100 grand a year, or they show that they have continual cash flow coming in through maybe multiple ventures, then a credit card company at that point is more likely to say, hmm, you know what? This person seems like they have been responsible with the credit that they've been allotted to them or just with the amount of income that they've been able to generate off of whatever it is that they're doing, we can go ahead and trust this person and they're seen as a low risk versus a person that maybe has an 800 credit score but maybe only has one source of income or is only getting paid every two weeks. Now, again, I don't want to, let's say, um, have you feel like you can't use this method because you can, just know that that credit limit may not be as high as you would want it to be. And then of course, none of this works if you don't actually ask your credit card company and you request for them to raise your credit limit. Now remember, you wanna have everything in line. You wanna know what your credit score is. You wanna pull yourself your own credit report and see, are there any delinquencies on there? And if you have anything above a 740, most likely not. You wanna see, is there anything that I can dispute before maybe asking my credit card company to raise my credit limit? If let's say you're in a 35% threshold or even 40% threshold with the credit utilization, I would drive that sucker down to zero, if not bring it under 20%. Again, you can slide with 30%, but for the most part, 20% or less is where I found a more successful rate, again, in my personal experience and in my personal opinion. Now, you're probably wondering, what the heck is the point of even having a high credit limit? What's the point of having 25,000, 50,000, 100,000 credit limit? Look, dude, I'm not gonna buy $100 million worth of paintings. What's the point of having a high credit limit? And the answer to that is, well, you can go ahead and bypass what I would call having to go through a traditional lending system with the bank or having to take out a loan from the bank altogether. If you've ever tried to take out a loan, apart from what we've seen with, let's say, the SBA and what they've done this year that's kind of just given out those PPP loans and those EIDL grants, anything apart from that, you'll see that they're pretty strict and pretty heavily regimented with what they look for and having your business plan, having your LLC in place, uh, having a strategy of how you're gonna maybe bring in a customer acquisition, all of that. And so you bypass that with having the high credit limit, being able to pull that cash. That's only about a three, 4% transaction fee. But in the back end, you have 12 to 18 months to put that cash to work for you. That can be through things like buying an investment property. That can be through things like if you're into maybe buying uh, a collectible or merchandise. If you're into that, maybe like watches, maybe like paintings, maybe like bags, designer bags that again, you're well versed in and you know exactly the ins and the outs of that. This is credit card arbitrage. This is credit card 
utilization where you're using these credit cards. So again, leverage yourself, putting yourself into buying real estate, putting yourself into maybe purchasing cars that you can maybe fix up and then sell on the back end. Using that $25,000, turning it into $35,000, turning it into $50,000. And again, you're not paying the interest on these cars because now you're paying, you're, 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 you've already paid the transaction fee. And so what ends up happening is now you're, you can use this as a loan to again, leverage yourself and putting yourself in a winning situation. Even if that means that you're using it to maybe invest more into your business, if that's buying more supplies, if that's maybe bringing on more staffing, whatever that is. Obviously, you want to make sure that before you're using these credit cards in the way that I'm telling you, you wanna make sure that using it, using it in a way that's comfortable for you. But of course, if you have over a 750 credit score, if you have your businesses in place, if you already have experience, let's say credit card churning or credit card arbitrage, or even if you have experience with knowing how to flip money because that's a skill all in it of itself, learning how to, knowing what markets to go into at the right time, coming out of them, opening up, let's say an Amazon FBA store, maybe going e-commerce with something if you wanted to diversify and then maybe jumping out of that market and going into something else. This is all going to be, let's say something that's case by case and something that's specific to you, what you know how to do in the niche that you feel comfortable diversifying yourself in and making a killing. So there you have it. Overall, it's pretty simple for you to get a higher credit limit. If you have all of those things aligned, it's really, it's only three or four things to worry about. The tougher side though, is making sure that you're not just using this money or just having, let's say this high credit limit, just to have it. Have it with a plan, utilize it, leverage that money because this is ultimately how you build wealth. This is how you can really get larger, uh, a larger amount of capital. And this is how you build a sustainable business or businesses that again, you're able to pass on to another generation or that you're able to scale out and protect yourself from an event kind of like what happened with 2020 where we saw businesses just go under and we saw one cash flow go under. And well, if you have two, three, four, five, six different types of, let's say incomes diversified coming into you, then obviously that protects you and it hedges you from any type of liability. And that's something else that banks like to see as well. If you found value in this content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below. Join the official community. If you enjoyed this content, then you'll love what we have going on over on the Inside with Earth show, which is our podcast style channel. As always, this video is sponsored by good friends over at Amazon's Audible, where you can pick up a free book as well as enjoy a free month by hitting the link down in the description and our good friends over at Ladder Life, where they've made it super easy for you to pick up your own life insurance in as little as five minutes. You can either walk through it yourself on the app or desktop, or you can have a specialist jump on a call with you. Either one is fine. The most important thing though, is that you have life insurance, especially in a time like this. And that's another way for you to guard and protect the wealth that you're building. I appreciate you watching this content. Until next time, everyone, we'll see ya.